Hi guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a reading vlog of Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is Bethany from the future, filming this after having done the reading vlog, doing the intro. This is a spoilery reading vlog, so if you don't want to be spoiled for Chain of Gold, you probably don't want to watch. But I do also have clips from the Chain of Gold launch event with Cassandra Clare and Marie Rutkowski in New York City. I actually started reading this book while I was doing my recent Instagram Controls My Day video, so a few of the clips at the beginning of the video are from that. I will link the full video for that up above if you guys want to check it out, but that was the day that I started reading the book. So if it's a little confusing, that's what's happening. Hope you enjoy. So I pretty much always bring a book with me when I go places and especially for a day like tomorrow where it's about self-care, I'm for sure going to be carving out some time for reading. I have two very exciting upcoming releases this month that I'm planning on reading. So I'm going to let Instagram vote on which of those two books I'm going to start reading tomorrow. I think I know which one's going to win. But you never know. And to make it fair, I decided to try to include two books that I think people are actually going to be excited about. Awesome. So in terms of which book I should start today, I'm actually kind of surprised at how many people were interested in Network Effect over Chain of Gold. Of course, unsurprisingly, Chain of Gold is the winner. I am going to be doing a reading vlog for this one. So my friend and patron, Isabella, over at the Feminist Bookworm was kindly given a arc copy of this, which she sent to Melanie from Mel's The Any, who sent it to me. So I am going to be reading this. I will start this today. I'm very excited about that. It is evenly split between salad and sandwich. So I think what I'm going to do is head back to Manhattan and go to Panera and get a half sandwich, half salad for lunch. That works out pretty well. And there's one not too far from the theater that I'm planning on going to. So let's head back onto the subway. finished with lunch and now I'm headed to the movie theater to get tickets. I'm going to be seeing Knives Out, which I'm super excited about. Hopefully it'll be a good time. And I did start Chain of Gold. I read a little bit. So far it's intriguing. I'm not very far in, but I'm just so excited to get back into this world with these new characters. I have been reading a little bit of Chain of Gold. I read the first like past section and chapter one. It is really interesting. I will say there are so many characters to keep track of and it's really making me wish that I had gone back and reread some of the short story collections because I know I'm forgetting pieces of who's who and all the backstory and I know you don't have to have that but I like to have it so I feel like I'm welcome to New York I feel like I'm kind of missing pieces but I'm still enjoying it so I will do more of an update on that Just, later I don't know the last time I took a day like this for myself Knives Out was so fun if you haven't seen it I would definitely recommend it the cast was great it was funny but I am worn out I am ready to chill out with Chain of Gold, read my book, wind down. So I'm gonna go get on PJs, take off this lovely makeup I've been wearing all day, and uh, get ready to get cozy. Hello. So a couple of things. I have a new phone and it's super HD and it's amazing how much of a difference it makes and it does a better job with less light. So that's fun. It has been a while since I have picked up Chain of Gold. Here's why. My kids have been sick and then dealing with asthma as a result that we're trying to get under control. And then we were traveling and I had a lot of anxiety and like did not have the bandwidth to sit and dive into this book. But I am excited for it. I do want to read it. And now it's coming out pretty soon and I'm going to the launch event for it in New York City. And I thought that would be a great way to do my vlog is try to do a reading vlog, get a chunk of this read before the event and take you along with me to the event with Cassie Clare and Marie Rutkowski, author of The Midnight Lie, which I also read an arc of in December and loved. So I am back. I am going to try to read some of this tonight and I will update you guys once I've made some significant progress and let you know how it's going.
Hey guys, so it is the next day. I fell asleep last night, but I did get some more reading done and now I am almost 100 pages in and um, I am loving it. The characters are so interesting. There are things that I'm curious about. There's love triangles beginning and I can see a lot of cool places that this could go. Um, there's ghosts. I have a feeling we're gonna maybe get some like fairy things, maybe, but I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah, so far really, really good. I will say I do hope that the finished copy includes like a family tree because keeping track of all the characters and who's who and who's related to who is a little bit daunting, but it's getting better. And, um, I also, I have to say like, I love Anna Lightwood so much. Um, she's just such an interesting character. Uh, with her like men's fashion choices and stuff. It's also interesting, Cordelia is Persian or at least half Persian and I think that's kind of an interesting choice. So we're getting, you know, more diversity here that's kind of done in interesting ways, large cast of characters. And Cordelia carries Cortana, which is interesting, which obviously we know from other books in this world mm -hmm. later on in history, how important Cortana is. And so I'm curious to see more of maybe the origins of Cortana um, in this. So far, we just know that she carries Cortana and it's been passed down through the family, but we don't know much else. So we'll see where it goes. I'm going to read a little bit more before I have to go get my kid from school and wake up my napping one. I am tired and a little bit sick, but definitely enjoying the book. Hey guys, so today is the day. Chain of Gold is out in the world. I am going to be leaving in about 30 minutes to line up for the Cassie Claire event tonight. Currently, I'm about 150 pages in and I am loving it. I was hoping I could get a little further, but maybe I'll read a bit while I'm waiting for the event to start with my arc. I will say Grace is super creepy and I'm wondering if maybe she's secretly fey or part fey, but something weird is for sure up with her. Also, I'm loving Cordelia. Um, so that is it for me. Now I will share with you guys when I get to the event. I'm super excited to get my finished copy of the book. Guardian outfit to celebrate Chain of Gold. <laughs> no idea if I'll ever get a chance to wear this again, so I've decided to wear this for you. You may be the only people who ever see it. I will think of something. Maybe I can have a theme like Reeve wedding. Get remarried again to the same person. Have a theme. That's a thing. I think that is it's a thing. thing. Like you can do, you know, anniversaries. Right. Yes. Vow renewal. Exactly. In Edwardian. In total. I'm excited about making my husband wear Edwardian yeah. clothes. <laughs> that seems like a good one. We, I mean, you all know that we are here for Chain of Gold, which is an absolutely gorgeous book that is um, rich in characters, including some familiar faces, many characters to love. And it tells the story of Cordelia Parsons who has come to London for her debut, only to find that she must hide her love from her best friend's brother, James Carondale, even if they and their friends are thrust into danger um, with the onset of some mysterious um, and really creepy um, and delightfully gruesome demon attacks. There are some really um, kind of mucusy pods. <laughs> I must confess. Let's say mucusy pods. <laughs> 
Okay. No need to say that. But the demons, the demons are definitely they're creepy. Gross. They're very gross. gross. You are the queen of making characters who make us all in love with them, and is showing the heartbreak and the bonds of love, whether it's between friends like Lucy and Cordelia, married couples like Tessa and Will, or the deep affection that Jen has for Tessa, Will, and their children. Could you tell us about one scene that you were really excited to write? In the book? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gauging our spoiler policy. So can you all hear me okay? Yes. Um, I think there are, I'm trying to, what I can kind of tell you that isn't too spoilery about what happens in the book and for those of you who've read Infernal Devices, you will definitely recognize, you know, Will and Gem and Tessa are all in this book as, as you know, background characters, but they are there. Definitely, their interactions were really fun for me to write because I had to kind of step away from them as characters in Infernal Devices and come back to them as characters who are parents in this book. And so one of the really fun scenes that I enjoyed was so Lucy has the ability to see ghosts, and one particular ghost in particular that she is fond of, the ghost of a boy named Jesse, and he's in her bedroom talking to her. And no one else can see her, only she can, him, only she can see him. So her father comes in and he starts just talking to her like, who's my little Lucy? Are you such a cute little thing? Like, so good. Such an adorable nose, and Jesse is like hysterical with laughter. And Lucy is like humiliated because her father is doing this stuff to her in front of a boy. But she can't tell him there's a boy there. So I really loved that scene because it was such a fun experience to write Will as a dad. And also the way in which the fact that he is a great dad and a really loving dad is also super annoying. <laughs> writing in 2005, it's true there was a lot less representation, like LGBT representation in YA, and when it was in YA, it was mostly contemporary realistic books that were generally about the experience of coming out and being gay, which is something I would not, you know, personally feel qualified to write, and also like, it made me think about the fact that, you know, when I was growing up, I had a lot of, I don't wide range of friends, many of whom were queer, and would always complain, the kind of books they liked to read didn't have characters like them. You know, they could read a book about coming out, and that has what its place it is useful, but what if they wanted to read, you know, a story that's like Game of Thrones, but with queer characters, or a story that's an urban fantasy, but with queer characters? Those things weren't available, so I thought, well, okay, you know, like, obviously when I'm writing this book, I want to include characters who are like my friends, so they can see themselves in this book. And I think that that, you know, I've come to have much more complicated and thoughts about diversity as I think we all have during, you know, since that time period. But I think the just the idea of thinking I want the people I know to see themselves in this book is sort of where you start. So that is why, you know, included Magnus and Alec and continue to include queer characters in all the series. And Anna specifically, I mean, I Anna, I love. She, so what Marie is saying is she is a Lady Rick, and a Rick is a specific kind of character. Would you say like mostly from historical fiction, or what, like, yeah, I think we see rakes most often. I think we see the rake in historical romance a lot, and they tend to be these guys. Who They're always men. Yes, they, they are, and they just love women and leave them. Yes. And still so the one woman comes along. Forever. Which is, it's a classic trope of, of historical romance and fantasy of this guy who, well, we've all know this guy, and they spread across like every genre, he's kind of a bad boy, he can't be tamed, you know, every, women love him, but he doesn't, you know, commit until that one lady comes along, it's always so special. And it's a really powerful trope, that's why it keeps recurring, I mean, 
Mr. Darcy actually fits into that, you know, as does Mr. Rochester, as do, you know, many of the famous heroes of literature. Mm -hmm. And so with Anna, what I wanted to do was take that trope and flip it and have this rape be a girl who cuts her way through, you know, the swaths of swath through London society, making all the other girls fall in love with her, but never committing, and everyone adores her, and all the women want to be with her, but she had her heart broken some years ago, and now she doesn't believe in love. But, as Marie says, you know, the question is, is there a special girl who is going to be that girl that makes Anna admit that maybe love is real? I mean, you have to read to find out, but as, as Marie said, she is not as callous as she seems. And I adore her. I think she is, I mean, one thing about Anna is that, because I knew that her, you know, her room, that she seemed a cold in her romantic side when we first meet her, I wanted her to be amazing to her friends. So she is, in fact, like a fantastic friend. Like if I were to pick one person from the book to be friends with, it is Anna because she knows everyone. She can get anything. When Cordelia first comes to town, she only has these ugly dresses that her mother bought her. And Anna's like, oh, no, this is a disaster and goes out and is like, you know, she's like, I happen, of course, to be, you know, to have had a love affair with the greatest tailor in all of London. And she will, of course, produce for you the greatest dresses in the world. And Cordelia's like, this is amazing. <laughs> I love how Anna invites her over for tea, and it immediately turns into something else that I am not, not necessarily happy with. <laughs> <laughs> Cordelia has other interests, but, um, but she's invited over for tea, things don't go quite as quickly. Anna always has, Anna says tea is always an excuse for a clandestine exactly. agenda, so yeah. Anna has her own plan, and she's like, right, if you are from tea, I need to do a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Cordelia is one of my very favorite characters you've written on. It's part because she's not only tough and talented with her favorite weapon, Cortana, but she also tries so hard not to let her hurt feelings show, even if she is made vulnerable in ways she could never expect. Is there anything that inspired you in the creation of Cordelia, or even of Lucy, her best friend? Um. <coughs> I mean, they're very different. Like, one of the things about Lucy and Cordelia is they're very much on opposites attract in a, as friends way. Um, you know, they experience their emotions differently and very express themselves outwardly very differently. Cordelia, like you said, tends to hide her emotions. She just doesn't show her vulnerability. And Lucy is, everything is on the surface. She says everything she thinks at the moment she thinks it, creating chaos everywhere. Um, I think with Cordelia, I have never written a girl who was hopelessly in love before. I'd done it before with boys. With girls, it's hard because of the stereotypes people often bring to the idea of a girl who is hopelessly in love as being somehow pitiable, or we should feel sorry for her, or she is doing something that's pathetic. And so with Cordelia, I wanted to show like the bravery and the courage and the strength of being in love with someone that doesn't love you back, and you know that, but you have complete, but she has a, you know, respect for herself and she is in no way weaker because of her love. She knows that, you know, love is in and of itself a good thing. And even if this love isn't returned, that's okay. She's a person who has a powerful ability to love. One day she'll love someone else. And so that was what I think I was thinking about when I came to writing Cordelia was how is, you know, like I've done, you know, with, with men, we grant them that strength. You know, we assume that if they are hopelessly in love, that actually cuts against a little bit the way that masculinity is often portrayed, allowing them to have vulnerability and emotions. With women who are considered to be emotional, it was interesting to kind of very kind of try to carefully calibrate this idea that Cordelia feels these feelings that aren't returned, but that that is a thing that makes her stronger and more kick-ass. Yeah, yeah. That is so well said. Normal, you know, daily speech. It would just be, I was, you know, stuck in sort of situation where like these concepts are completely like off the table for our characters to be able to think about or understand. So I tried to express Anna's feelings by, you know, by writing how she felt rather than using words that for us basically, you know, we are able to have words like gender queer that sums up a specific experience. So I had to actually describe the experience in which she says, sometimes I feel more masculine, sometimes I feel more feminine, I consider myself a gentle woman. 
meaning, you know, I am a gentleman, I am also a woman, and I kind of move along a spectrum in my self-identity. Um, and so that's sort of how I have tried to portray Anna as being very clear in her own mind that her gender is, I mean, what we would call gender, her sense of her self exists on a spectrum and she does the things that make her feel comfortable and more like herself and we can sort of read from her actions how we would define her today. I hope that helps. Also, I mean, she's just a badass and I'm glad you love her. I'm sure that she would also love you, but then she would probably leave you and then you would come out. <laughs> better, she's not here right <laughs> I remember picking up City of Bones like 10 years ago when I was in middle school and my girlfriends and I just fell in love. I dressed up as a shadow hunter with Isabel Swift at the movie premiere. That was kind of trash in my opinion, but did not think that was neither, neither did the TV show. I was really hoping it would just to continue, but anyway. <laughs> with each other and what they're like individually. So like I knew who all these characters were. Like I was like, I knew James and Lucy and Cornelia and Anna and Thomas and Christopher before I know what the story is about. You know, and I'm like, okay, these are these people. What is the story? Like what is the story that involves all of these people and it evolves out of who they are? So I think that's part of, you know, for me at least creating characters who are layered. And I also tend to think of character creation as, okay, you know what that is? Like, call it like the iceberg. Icebergs, in theory, we're only seeing 10%, 90% is below the surface. So I have to know 100%, but 90% you're never gonna see. You're just gonna see the 10% at the top. But I think knowing that other 90% makes them feel more vivid on the page. Hi, I'm Lily, um, and I was wondering, this is also for you, Marie, if you can to answer it, but we're going on almost 15 years as a Shadowhunter family, which means we have lots of different characters, lots of different species, and so I was kind of wondering if you were a character in your own books. What species, what time period, and what family would either of you be to? <laughs> Go first. <laughs> Lucy is completely unlike me 
in the fact that she is always perky and says everything she thinks and is very emotionally open, but she's a writer. So I relate to her on that level. Like she writes stories and I'm like, I, and I'm like, I get how you process emotion through stories because I do that too. So that part of her is something that I feel close to. But I guess if I had to pick, oh my god. Um, you can be yourself. If I was if I was the child of the world, I would be instantly killed. It's very dangerous. So I guess, oh man, I don't want to be a Herondale. They are so dramatic. Um, but I love the Carstiers family, and I would love to be related to Jem because he's such a sweetheart. So I guess I had to pick a family, Carstairs. If I had to pick a kind of being, I would want to be a warlock. They're awesome, and you can live forever without drinking blood, which is gross. And if I had to make a specific character, probably Tessa, because I really relate to the way she feels about books. So in a lot of ways, she's the most close to me. I was with my friend Sarah, and we wanted to, to pick up some food and go have a picnic in the park. So we went, we bought some food, we bought like, in English, are big on pies, which are not like what we think of as pie, but are like these little pastries that are stuffed with like meat and cheese and stuff like that. So we got a bunch of those. We go to the park and we start, and all these ducks start surrounding us. And we're like, all right. So we're like throwing them pieces of, of, of pie. And suddenly Sarah like makes a face of horror and she's like, wait, these are duck pies. We're feeding duck ducks. <laughs> Ducks are cannibals. <laughs> and I was like, oh my god, that's, you're right. So I was like, okay, well, we just gotta go. You know, like, never speak of this terrible thing again. And we, like, put our stuff away, we start leaving the park, and the ducks start chasing us. So we're like, yes, the ducks are like, and we're like, and the ducks are yes. Yeah, so we, like, ran out of my park with these ducks honking after us. And after that, I really had very unkind feelings about ducks. <laughs> Wrote them into a Clockwork Angel where Will is like, never trust a duck. That's where it comes from. And thank you guys so much. I wish we could answer every question. Hello, it's me, the worst vlogger ever of her chain of gold. Um, sorry, I think it's been a few days. I am still less than 200 pages in to the book. I am really into it. It's super interesting. Grace is hella creepy. Um, and I wanted to share, I just unboxed this on Instagram, but I'm gonna show you guys too. I got the Chain of Gold Sip Spy box. They do like tea subscriptions, but they did a special Chain of Gold box and it's pretty awesome. So let me show you what came in it. Also, in case you're wondering, nope, this was not sponsored. This was me seeing this on Instagram and uh, I just had to have it. So they do have a subscription service, but this is just like a one-time thing. Can we just appreciate, look at the runes, uh, it's beautiful. There are spoilers on the back with descriptions for why they chose all the teas, and this also came with those character cards you've been seeing everywhere, which is part of why I bought it in the first place. Um, so yeah, this is pretty awesome. I will read to you guys about why they chose them, each is for a different character. This is kind of cool, it's got like reusable tea bags in here, which is awesome. Um, okay, first tea we have is Blood Orange Refreshing Herbal Tea from Harney and Sons. Here are the things in it. Apple, orange peel, rose hips, hibiscus, lots of other stuff. Sounds delicious. Um, and I'm just going to read from this. This is inspired by Matthew Fairchild, who considers himself to be a bohemian following in the footsteps of his hero, Oscar Wilde, who is amazing. So good hero to pick, Matthew. He glories in the creative explosion of the Bell Epic, poetry, art, literature, dance, theater. Matthew enjoys it all. This tea evokes his flamboyant nature and zest for life. Matthew is frequently found enjoying tea with his friend Anna Lightwood at her flat. Uh, Anna Lightwood is also kind of amazing. You know what? I should get out the character cards and then we can look at the, look, the characters as I tell you about the teas. So let's do this. Blood Orange Tea, inspired by Matthew Fairchild. Doesn't he just look like a rake who goes about carousing and partying? Um, I think that's pretty awesome. He probably would spike his Blood Orange Tea. And we have 
Anna Lightwood, who is just a wonderful character. She has a lady rake who we had learned about in a short story previously, and I'm hoping that we get to see more of her on the page so far. I'm loving when we have got, gotten her in a few scenes, but I'm hoping we'll see some more of her. So there you go. That is the blood orange tea. Next up, we have <sighs> Sabroso Chai, Mystical Chai. Um, I am a fan of chai. This looks pretty awesome. So if you can't guess, this one is inspired by one of our main heroines here, Cordelia Carstairs, our redheaded Persian beauty who comes from a culture that values drinking tea. This says she's come by her love of her tea from her mother who is Persian. Drinking tea has been part of Persian culture since the time of the Silk Road. Cordelia likes to cut the spiciness of her chai tea with a bit of sugar and sometimes a pinch of rose petals. Basically all of the teas that they put in here sound delicious. Next up, we have a lavender tea, aromatic, restorative, and caffeine-free with jasmine and ginger. Um, I love jasmine. I love lavender. This sounds amazing. And of course, guys, this is inspired by the lovely Lucy Herondale, who is a writer. Note the pen in her hand. There is her tea. Let's read what they say about it. Lucy Herondale is a well-behaved young English girl, or so it seems. Her personality is very much reflected by the calming aspects of lavender tea, which is well known for its ability to soothe insomnia and stress. However, just like Lucy has a secret mischievous side, this tea contains a little bit of kick in the form of spicy ginger. That seems very appropriate. And then the final tea that came in the box is this Lapsang Suchung Black Tea, certified organic from Davidson's. I like a good black tea. And this one is inspired by James Herondale. We love, love a Herondale. Note the golden eyes from his demonic heritage, the wild black curly hair, and the book and gun. Very interesting. So he gets the black tea, and it says, James Herondale is the perfect young English gentleman, which of course means that he appreciates his tea. Still, James is an unusual English gentleman in that he is descended from demons and warlocks. So perhaps it is unsurprising that he enjoys an unusual tea like Lapsang Suchung, which gets its unique flavor from the tea leaves being smoked over pine boughs. That's super interesting. Um, I have not tried that before, so I'm really curious to see what the flavor is like. And then of course, our final character card is Thomas Lightwood, nerdy, scrawny boy turned giant beast of a man, but still nerdy. Um, so I love it. This was like a really great box with four teas that all sound delicious. Um, I think I might make one of these tonight. I probably shouldn't do caffeine in the slate. It's like seven, it's not that late, but still. Um, I don't know, guys. Well, I have been stressed. Maybe I should try the lavender. I will make some tea and show you. Hey guys, so I decided to make the lavender tea inspired by Lucy. Here's what it looks like. It smells good. It smells like jasmine and lavender and a little ginger, which is what's in it, so it should. Ooh, that is delicious. Like, I wouldn't think to put that blend of things together, but it tastes like all of the things I just said, and it's really good. I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit, and then I'm gonna drink some more, and maybe I'll get some more reading done. Sorry for the vlog that's like super all over the place, but at least you got some quality, uh, content with the sips by unboxing. I will check in with you guys later. Guys, so I have been reading. I'm starting doing this thing where I'm reading the physical book. I now have the finished copy. Very exciting. Uh, it's so pretty. Um, and listening on Audible at the same time. Oh shoot, I just like lost where I was. Um, I am on page two, I think it was like 217. Where am I? Oh my goodness. Okay. So I'm on page 216. I thought I would check in with you guys. Um, I am just loving this. And I have to say, like, there have been several times where I just laughed. Cassie writes sarcastic and dry humor so well. There's a lot of, like, really funny things. Um, I'm just really enjoying it. And I'm liking getting to see Lucy as a character. I love that she writes, like, these romantic adventure stories. They're hilarious. Cordelia is an awesome heroine. 
Um, yeah, I'm just really, really loving all of the characters, loving the story. It's going super well. I'm hoping to finish reading this weekend. So I'm on 217. It's about 600 pages long. We'll see how it goes. Maybe I will check in with you guys again around the 300 page mark. Oh, but one thing that's really crazy, I don't know why I didn't know this, but I didn't know this. Apparently there's like a genealogy chart that's been out there for a while that says that Lucy marries Jesse Blackthorne, who's a ghost in this. And I just found this out today when I was talking to somebody and I'm kind of shook. I'm like, oh my gosh, wait. So like, Jesse's a ghost, but a weird ghost. Like his body's being held in necrom with necromancy. So maybe he comes back to life at some point. Like what is going to happen? Um, anyway, so maybe I'll check in again around the 300 page mark and let you guys know how it's going. Right now though, I'm gonna take a break and go eat some Peruvian food. Um, it's delicious. We ordered pollo saltado, which is this delicious chicken and veggie and french fry dish. Um, so definitely comfort food. All right, here it is. Chicken, veggies, french fries, this delicious ahi green sauce, and some rice. Yay dinner. Oh my goodness, you guys. I freaking love this book so much. This might end up being a favorite for me this year. Um, I'm at page 250. And like so much just happened. Grace is hella creepy and manipulative and like she's got something going on that she's trying to do. Like I do not trust her in the slightest, but I am like living for this friend group, fighting together. Um, this is just making me so happy. It's so good. It's like, it's, it's just, this is everything. This is so freaking good. I am loving it. Okay, I'm gonna keep guys. Reading. Chapter 12, oh my goodness, I knew Grace was creepy and up to something and had some weird ability to control people and clearly now we know she does. I totally called it really early on. She's so freaking creepy, oh my goodness. And there's so much drama and different things happening. Cassie is amazing at weaving together like drama and real feeling and humor and plot like She's really masterful at it, especially at this point. Anyway, um, I have been making some tea. I'm trying this, uh, that blood orange tea. I really liked the lavender one. So now we have the blood orange tea. Let's try it. I feel like I should let it steep longer. Or maybe it just needs to cool down and let the flavors like really soak in. I'll okay, guys, try to get I am flying through this book. I'm almost at the 350 page mark. So much is happening. It's fascinating. Also, I think my tea is now cool enough. I can try it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got like a light orangey flavor. I probably, again, should have let it steep for longer, but it's good. I will drink that. I had one quote that I really liked from Tessa that I thought I would read. This is on page 276. And this is Tessa talking to Will about the past. We were all very brave then, said Tessa. I wonder sometimes if it is easier to be brave when one is young, before one knows truly how much there is to lose. I just really loved that line, I think. It's also probably pretty accurate. I feel like Cassie has developed into such an incredible writer and I don't know that she always gets the credit that she's due, but this book is seriously fantastic and the characters are really interesting. There's so much going on. We have Matthew Lightwood who clearly is dealing with alcoholism and so I'm curious to see how that kind of gets played out. There's a lot of queer characters. Matthew is bisexual. Anna Lightwood is genderqueer and loves women. We have some other gay characters and various things happening. I'm really curious about all of the different love triangles and relationships and where those are gonna go, but it's great. It's like heartwarming, it's funny, there's good friendships, there's family relationships. It's just, it's a really, really great book. Okay, I am gonna keep reading. Um, this is the thing about her books. It's like once I get into them, I don't want to put them down. And uh, that's definitely where I'm at right now. So page 346. There it is. The chai, like the tea from the box. A spoonful of rose water is the secret to a good chai. Okay, guys, so it is late. I am pausing for tonight, but I got through so much. This is where I'm at now. Um, I don't have that much left. I'm on like page 433. It is so 
good. So many things are happening. Like, I don't know how to even like break it down and talk that much about it. Everybody has so many secrets and different motivations and it's just so interesting and complicated. And also, man, there was like a bit of a steamy scene there with James and Cordelia. Yeah, very interesting. I like them together. I will also say, even though I know he's kind of prickly and not perfect, I kind of like Alistair. Um, I feel for him. He's kind of a jerk sometimes, but I still really like him as a character. Anyway, that is going to do it for me tonight. I'm hoping to finish the book tomorrow. I think that's definitely doable. I have like less than 200 pages left. So that's the plan. I will catch you guys. In um, I just finished chapter 20. Cordelia is awesome. So awesome. Continuing to read. I don't have that much left. I have like a little over 100 pages left to read. Oh my goodness. It's so good. So many things are happening. I am actually really excited about the drama that's going to come with this like supposedly fake well, like marriage of convenience thing that's going to happen with James and Cordelia. I love a marriage of convenience plot. And I, I love the like juiciness that's going to come with like her secretly being in love with him. It's just, it's, there's, I, I don't know. Cassie Clare is so brilliant at like plotting all of these things to make them work. Also, it's been really great seeing Magnus show up again. Although this happened earlier. I love Magnus Bane. He's like, one of my all-time favorite Shadowhunter world characters. Uh, but Cordelia, I love Cordelia. She's like such a strong woman and um, her and Cortana is just such an interesting thing. I don't know. I'm, I'm loving this. I'm loving all of the relationship dynamics, the friendships and the families and the romance and the angst and all of the like plots and intrigue. And it's so good. It's so freaking good. I think this might be the best book Cassie Clare has ever written, at least for me. This is like maybe going to be one of my favorites. Oh, so good, guys. Okay, I'm going to go do some more reading. I don't think it's going to take me long to finish. Oh. My God. Okay, I just finished. I have a little bit left for like, it's like an extra short story um, in the first collector's edition. But, whoo, okay. Like what to talk about. So Matthew is like destroying everything basically um his alcoholism and now he apparently has feelings for Cordelia that is going to cause so many problems later on in this series so like I'm curious to see where that takes things and how Magnus ends up playing a role in all of this Tatiana is super creepy she's such an interesting villain though Tatiana and Grace both are so interesting and uh even Alistair who's not like quite a villain but like, Cassie writes such interesting characters that are complicated and have real feeling motivations and aren't, like, caricatures, at least at this point in her writing career. Um, wow. Yeah, this is freaking amazing. It is so good. So good. Definitely, definitely a new favorite book for me. Um, it's going to be on my favorites of the year, guys. Uh, yeah, it's really awesome. So I'm going to read the little short story, which I think is... Uh, Will and Tessa's wedding. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's like Will and Tessa's wedding. So that should be super cute and fun. But man, like, does she know how to end something? And God knows how long we're gonna have to wait for the next book in the series. But like, oh man, this is so good. That's so cute. Oh my gosh. I mean, if you like Will and Tessa, like this is a really, really sweet little story. Oh man, so many feelings. Um, yeah, guys, clearly Chain of Gold is going to be like one of my favorite books of the year. Um, it's so freaking good. So good. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this reading vlog. I don't know what all footage I have that I'm putting together, but talk to me in the comments down below. Tell me if you've read Chain of Gold, if you're going to read Chain of Gold. I have so many feelings about this and it's just so good. I think maybe my favorite book that I've read from Cassandra Clare, which is pretty amazing because I've read all of her books. So yeah, really amazing. Okay. Talk to me in the comments down below. If you guys liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.